good afternoon, good evening, uh, colleagues. Thank you very much for uh, making your time to come and join us today on a webinar, which is basically going to be facilitated by our guest, uh, Professor uh, Cameroon Modisa. So the topic of today is basically the impact and benefits of uh, accounting uh, in a South African society. So first thing I would like to um, welcome everyone today to, to this session. Uh, feel free if you've got any question in the end. So feel free to ask any question, but without wasting any time, um, I would like to introduce you to our facilitator. Our workshop he is um, an experienced uh, auditor uh, who's also Okay, so apologies. Okay, so he's an experienced auditor um, who is currently working at uh, UNISA as the acting uh, director in the accounting uh, uh, in accounting. So without wasting any time, so I would like to uh, uh, introduce uh, Professor uh, Kamarum Disane. So I don't know if Prof, you want me to share your slides or you're going to share it with yourself. I'm gonna share on my side, thanks. Okay. So I didn't actually want to spoil uh, by giving them your bio. Maybe when you start, just basically uh, tell our members exactly who is uh, Prof. Kamrim Gisane. So I'm sure maybe some of them, they know that you, the youngest um, a black uh, professor in South Africa. So over to you, sir. Um. I'm just uh, hope you can see my screen. Uh, yes, I can put, see it. I'm not gonna put on slide mode. Just give me a second. I hope it's on slide mode on your side. It is very uh, visible, clear. Okay, cool, no, thank you. No, first, uh, thank you Mavango for this opportunity. Uh, my name is Cameron Modisani. I'm gonna be presenting on the impact and benefits of accounting in the South African society. Okay, in terms of the agenda, I'm gonna be explaining um, what, is, uh, what is accounting. Um, then I'm gonna delve into the training of accountants. And then I'm gonna talk about the accounting scandals that we have experienced here in South Africa in recent years. And lastly, I'm gonna be talking about um, accounting for, for small businesses. Um, just to give you a brief uh, overview of myself, yes, uh, my name is Cameron Mulisani. I have over 14 years of experience um, in external auditing, internal auditing, assurance, finance and accounting. Uh, I've got extensive exposure in, in auditing um, public sector, private sector, including JC listed companies and also the big four banks, uh, such as AFSA, AFSA Capital, AFSA Capital. While I was working at PwC, I audited mainly the the JC listed companies there. And I, I supervise masters and PhD students um, at, the at the University of South Africa. And I'm also a board member uh, currently serving um, within ISACA and also the chairperson of the audit and the risk uh, committee within Oxfam South Africa. And yes, I've got a PhD in accounting and I've got a master's. Uh, Bachelor and honors and uh, um, and 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 an undergrad and I'm I'm CISA qualified. I'm also ISAP qualified. I didn't put my uh, my my SABA qualifications there. And I'm also a member of uh, Institute of Internal Auditors, ISACA, uh, South Africa Institute of uh, Accountants, Institute of Directors. So uh, and I've put in my uh, my contact details there. So that's just a brief summary of who I am. And, and, I'm, and I'm passionate about the field of accounting and auditing. And uh, my research speciality is mainly around the impact of, of IT in the accounting space. So that's, that's, that's my area of speciality. And that was mainly what my, uh, my PhD thesis was all about. Now, just to go to today's topic in terms of uh, telling you a bit more about uh, what is accounting. So accounting can be defined as a process of maintaining financial records and estimates 
um, using information to make critical decisions. So the, the key thing about accounting is that um, it, it, is, it, it is important for the users of financial statements in order for them to, to make uh, decisions on whether to invest or not, or not to invest in a certain particular company. So it's quite important that the, the, the presentation of, of those financial statements, it is a, a true and an accurate reflection of what's actually happening within a particular organizations. As I said to you, it's mainly used by business owners, investors, even government alike as well. For example, if a business owner is looking for a, uh, for a loan for a bank, from, from a bank, they would have to have proper financials, which are, are properly documented by a qualified accountant and also reviewed by, by a, a registered auditor in order for, the, for one to actually attest to those financial statements which have been prepared. So again, just to give you a, a, a historical perspective of where accounting actually comes from, um, it actually comes from, um, so introduced thousands of years ago, uh, using clay to tokens to keep records of crops and, and livestock. So remember, remember, remember back in the day, we didn't actually have money. So, so crops and, and, and if you're a farmer, et cetera, it was used as a form of, uh, of, of, of currency or money. Now in, mo in modern day accounting, um, in modern day perspective, which comes from the uh, American Institute of, of Certified Public Accountants. So accounting is, um, it is the art of recording, classifying, summarizing in significant manner in terms of money, transactions and events which actually happen. So basically it's, 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 a, it's, it's a way of actually telling a story of what the business is actually about based on, on numbers. And then in terms of the fields of accounting, um, what can be actually be done there? There can be mathematics in terms of the, the actual arithmetics around the actual numbers and how, how they're actually being calculated, the analysis and interpretation around the, the, your financials and planning for the future. And also the, the key component would be the communication in terms of how uh, is accounting information actually being communicated to the users of, of accounting statements or financial records, computer and IT, it will be mainly around in terms of the processing of, of, of the figures in terms of uh, use of IT software uh, to, to, to process uh, uh, accounting information. Like currently, you've got a number of accounting pa uh, packages, including, um, you know, Pastel, you've got your ERP applications, um, uh, you've got your Sage, etc. So all those different um, uh, accounting software is actually quite used in the fields of accounting and then also finance in terms of planning for the future and also focusing as well. And then in terms of what to learn in terms of the account accounting basic principles. So th this sort of things can actually be learned in accounting, the basics of accounting concepts, uh, terminologies about how we classify certain transactions in, in our accounting books, uh, specific um, uh, practices and exercises which, which actually been, been used and the modern trends in the accounting world and also the importance and benefits around accounting in terms of how, what can people actually benefit uh, mainly around the, the, the financial information which is actually depicted in our accounting um, uh, information or our financial statements. Okay. Okay. And then in terms of the jobs of, of an accountant, so an, an accountant would be a professional who actually performs several accounting functions for a business or, or and in individuals. And, and by the way, you know, when someone thinks of an accountant, they, they often think it's just one person. It's just a, a number of, of, of people in terms of uh, the, the types that can be classified into a cost accountant. All these people actually do different types of work. These examine the typical expenses and, and maybe cost containment, also with budgeting, et cetera, within, within an organization. And then you've got your management accountant. This one mainly looks at the focuses perhaps on the strategic function of the entity in terms of uh, helping with the financial health, financial ratios to see how the, the organization is actually performing. And then you've got your auditor. The auditor would have to perform accounting uh, work such as vouching the accuracy of the financial statements. As you would know, an accountant would have to prepare the accounting um, records and then the auditor would have to come in and, 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 and attest on, on whether are they really a true reflection 
of what's actually happening within that particular business. And then you've got your forensic accountant. The forensic accountant is typically invited when, um, or, or investigator, it's typ typically invited when a fraud is being uh, committed at a particular entity. So we're trying to in investigate any particular fraud which could have occurred. And then you've got an investment accountant. There you've got, it's, sometimes we, we call them a corporate accountant. There they look at, uh, in, the, in the fields of finance, corporate finance uh, and investments. So they look at uh, um, in terms of uh, well, what sort of areas the business can actually invest in. And then, and then you've got your typical routine jobs in terms of what an accountant does includes recording of sales, accounting balance, I mean, accounting receivables, um, summarizing of the financials, et cetera, preparing and issuing of reports to management, issuing of tech reports, um, validating the financial transactions. So these are some of the duties of, of, of an accountant. And then in terms of the steps of how does one actually become an accountant? Firstly, you would need to earn a bachelor's degree and then, um, then include that to be to be perhaps uh, uh, obtain your honors degree. Nowadays we call it a postgraduate diploma. And then you you gain your work experience. And then you would consider if you want to do a master's in, in accounting like me. And then you become a licensed accountant, which, which would mean you have to write your board exams. Obviously there are a number of board exams, but I'll talk to you later about that in terms of um, what sort of uh, professional board is you actually find here in South Africa. And then after that, after you you qualified as an either as a registered auditor, chartered accountant, a professional accountant, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and then you'd have to continue with your uh, CPD, which is your professional uh, uh, development, which you have to maintain in order for you to maintain that uh, particular designation that you have. Okay. Now the question, uh, next question would be: Are auditors and accountants' jobs at risk? So if, if you note in, in the this actually comes from a study which was done by the University of Oxford, Oxford, in the UK, whereby they actually uh, highlight the top ten jobs whereby are likely to be automated in terms of. So sometimes people wonder: um, Can can the the job of accountants and auditors actually be, be automated? I see they've got a number of uh, of, of items. Got telemarketers, for example. Uh, insurance underwriters, watch preparers, and then you've got something there which talks to tax preparers. Typically, tax pre preparers would would typically be your accountant. So any any job which is repetitive can ultimately be be, be automated. But the key thing about being an accountant is that uh, the key skill that actually comes from accountant that lies in the analysis and also the interpretation and also the the communication of the of the accounting and the financial information, simply mean meaning I'm making sense of the numbers because it's not good having a computer which actually prepares the numbers, but you also need someone to actually interpret those um, those numbers to to to, to 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 actually determine the health of your company. Okay, and then in terms of the training of the accountant, in terms of what has actually happened over the the the. Uh, over the years, you know, I actually saw this picture. I have to confess, I got this picture from my sister. She posted it as a WhatsApp status uh, a few weeks ago, and then she said that, um, you know, in terms of the technology, um, in terms of the phones that were used in, in, in 1920, to <clears throat> and, and the types of phones that we use now, which are, um, are much more advanced, and then she was comparing it to. Um, to, to the accounting, I mean, to, to the education, which actually happened in 1920, whereby you actually sat in a classroom in 2021 or 2022, you still sit in, in, a, in a classroom as well. But I think it has slightly changed a bit because now you've got online classes, Zoom classes, et cetera, is what we're currently doing right now. So it's quite interesting to see what has actually changed over the years um, with the emergence of technology. So now, what, what actually happened in 1920, the training of accountants, which was mainly male dominated. This is how accountants were actually trained. So they would actually sit in a room and then they'd be recording a strip of, uh, of, of invoices or transactions and recording them uh, in, in, in either, either manually or, or using a very, a very basic um, uh, machine um, with regards to record, recording accounting transactions. And then what actually happened over the years as well, 
that there were a number of uh, accounting tools or machines which were actually developed. This one here um, on, the, on the right is actually quite big. It's, it's called an electronic uh, accounting machine. It was quite massive at the time um, uh, in terms of, uh, the, these were the first accounting uh, machines which, which were actually used to record transactions and to process financial data. And then obviously there were other inventors such as the CompTIA and also the Rampton bookkeeping machine, which, which was also used to almost like a, a more like a, a bookkeeping uh, uh, machine, almost like a typewriter, which was used by typical clerks to record uh, accounting tr transactions. And then we move over to the 1950s. Uh, back then, they didn't typically again have the sophisticated the sophisticated accounting systems that we have that we have today. As you can see, you've got two ladies there, uh, whereby they would be vouching transactions, whereby they'd be using a punch keypad. So one would be, would be perhaps uh, sorting them out, and, and the other one would be recording those uh, transaction in in a pentography, which was used uh, back in those days, uh, in the in the eighteen hundreds. So it's quite interesting in, in terms of what has actually happened over the years, and then. You find in the um, 19, um, towards, um, towards uh, 1970s or, or 1968, there was a much more sophisticated uh, a, a, a machine which was, which was actually published in the management accounting um, uh, journal, which was a much more powerful machine. But the key thing here, if you can note, the machine here is also quite big compared to the laptops that we use nowadays um, uh, to record Counting transactions. And then we move over to the 1970s. This way by the first uh, sort of like automated. Here you've got you, you still had your, your floppy stick, your floppy disk or, or stick, whereby um, this uh, I would call this probably the first generation of ERP systems which were used to record uh, um, accounting transactions. So this was called a VisiCalc. It was actually launched in 1978 uh, and, and was first released. It was also followed by Lotus, probably um, those, those of you who are quite old. I remember back in, uh, in when I was working at PwC, I'm revealing my age now. We actually used a bit of Lotus um, uh, for, for, for some of our work there. And then in terms of uh, the, the professional firms, or bodies which you actually find in South Africa, there's actually quite a number of them. And then people, are, some people might not be familiar that you know what, that there's actually a number of accounting and auditing bodies in South Africa. I've just listed a few there, including the South African Institute of Certain Accountants, uh, professional auditors, I mean, professional accountants, uh, Association for Certified um, uh, uh, Chartered Accountants. Chartered Institute of, of Management Accountants, so that again, Institute of Business Accountants. So all of these uh, um, um, institutions uh, that have got uh, uh, qualifications or designations which they, they normally offer to the members. In most cases, you'd have to obviously have your accounting uh, degree uh, and, 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 and in a postgraduate diploma, et cetera, write certain exams, have some years of experience, um, of obtain your articles, et cetera in order for you to, to be a, a full member and also to use the designations which, which they actually offer here in South Africa. Okay, and then uh, in terms of, there's been actually an evolution with regards to the accounting and around the big four firms. And, uh, it, and now I, want, I want to take you back to, um, in terms, terms of a bit of history, uh, uh, since you know, <laughs> I'm a bit nerdy. So in terms of what actually happened in 1984, there was a, a bit of creative accounting which actually happened, uh, whereby the, 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 there were some co corporate scandals which actually happened around accounting fraud, and, and obviously there was a misrepresentation of the accounting books. So, so, so back then in the in, in the 1800s, uh, towards the late 1800s, Queen Victoria issued the first royal, royal charter for the accountants, and here in South Africa. That's when the South African Institute of Chartered Accountants was actually established. So accountants were thus used to, 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 to help in terms of the accumulation uh, of, of, of capital. And also um, it, it was mainly about the colonialist power which, which um, the British had, had had at the time of South Africa. So they needed to find a way 
of how they can actually uh, attest and also gain trust that the, 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 the financial information which was actually being prepared can actually be, be relied upon. So hence they developed these independent auditors to come in and, and look at the accounting statements which had been prepared by, by, by typical accountants in South Africa. So accounting firms have, have always been at the cent, uh, central in terms, of, um, in, in, in terms of how business actually grow. And um, that's when the big four firms, such as Deloitte at the time, were actually formed. And that's how they actually managed to get uh, market share and capital power back then. Um, so, so, so in a financial in a financial world, uh, accountants are quite important, and because they they pro provide a number of skills, including consulting services, including tax, financial risk management, and financial accounting, amongst many other things which accountants um, actually do. So, accountant acts as both monitors. I mean, monitors in terms of uh, what's actually happening within the global global economy. As you would know, the big four firms in Africa include PwC. Uh, at KPMG, EY, and also Deloitte. But then, these big four firms over the past years, they are, they are, they, um, they've been in the public eye in terms of some of the accounting um, of scandals which actually happened um, over the years, um, which I'll, I'll, I'll talk to you more in detail about. And then you've got your big, the big four, four firms were prim primarily providing auditing services, uh, which is uh, done by the South African South Africa's uh, Independent Regulatory Board, which is ERBA. So there are three types of audit services which are actually recognized within ERBA. And that is uh, internal auditing services. Typically, your internal auditors uh, are, are in-house. They, they, they assess in, uh, compliance to, to certain controls monitoring of internal financial controls and policies, uh, and also internal auditors do not necessarily only look at accounting and financial transactions, that look at uh, all the controls within a business. And then you've got your external uh, auditing services. Uh, typically, this will be done by your um, external audit firms in terms of reviewing your financial accounting systems, providing assurance, uh, and also providing uh, uh, regulatory reporting, and reporting uh, compliance, performance information, et cetera, and also signing off on the financial statement to, to, to reflect on whether do this financial actually re reflect what is actually happening within a particular company. And then lastly, you've got your forensic auditing, as I said to you before, um, uh, typically in, in, in issues of uh, malfeasance of some sort, if there's, there's certain fraud which is to be investigated, that they would actually be, be invited to come in and actually look at that fraud which has been uh, committed within a, a typical uh, entity. Okay, so now the big four accounting for scandals uh, which has happened, you know, by the way, in South Africa, the big four actually have more than 50% of the market share of the market, of the market capital. <clears throat> Uh, within 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 the accounting and audit industry, but they will also have this fair share of scandals which actually happened here in South Africa. For example, you'd know about the standoff issue, whereby uh, external auditors uh, missed uh, certain inaccuracies within the financial statements. Um, market Mark Yost and his friends, uh, you know, they 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 were defrauding the company and the, and the shareholders. Um, this company was actually misrepresenting its own financial position to, to investors and also to the public for years. And guess what? Everyone always asks, where were the auditors? The auditors were there. So uh, Deloitte was the auditor for Standup at the time. Again, uh, Deloitte was auditing uh, 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 Tonga Hewlett. Again, they failed to report suspicious, suspicious activities at both corporations. Um, there was a failure again of, uh, of auditors. And then again at SAA, which is with the South African Airways, according to the Zona report, the internal auditors and also the external auditors being PwC and also Konkin failed in their duties as watchdog and accounting institutions. So these guys, they actually failed to, 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 to identify 
uh, major misstatements which actually occurred uh, at SAA. So, so PLFC and Konki together earned a whopping 19 million rands for the work which they did at SAA between uh, 2012 and about, uh, to about 2016. And they were fined a measly 200,000 rands. If you can just compare, these guys, they earned 19 million rands and they only fined 200,000 rands, which is just a drop in the ocean compared to what these guys actually earned over the years. And then you've got your, your VBS scandal. And VBS was actually audited by KPMG and the sound of only audits. Again, there was a mis misrepresentation uh, in terms of the annual financial, financial statements. And you know, what's, what's interesting about, about this uh, bank heist, which actually happened at, at VBS was the fact that it was so elementary, it was so basic that a trained auditor could, could have been, uh, uh, could have easily picked up what was actually happening. But obviously we know that the a partner at KPMG was actually in the pocket and also in, uh, he, he had his hands in the cookie jar at, um, at VBS as well. Okay, so now just to talk about small businesses in terms of um, if you own a small business, how would you go about in terms of accounting uh, for, for small businesses in terms of what would be important for small business owners? For me, I would say firstly, with the issue of budgeting. So business owners need to have a standard, a standard format in terms of how, how they do budgeting to ensure that revenues are properly, properly projected uh, and, and monitored as well um, against uh, matching costs. So it's quite important for any small business to have a proper budget, an annual uh, uh, budget uh, in, in terms of to monitor the costs within uh, your business. And then the next one would be, it is important for you to set up solid controls to ensure that the business operates in accordance with the set of budgets and also there's a reduced loss of asset. It's quite important that you set up controls in your business because if you don't have any controls, then anything can happen. So um, um, uh, I would assume uh, what happened in, in, in big entities such as Steinoff and, 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 and VBS, et cetera, they had controls, but, but those controls were negated and in order to failed to pick up those things. And then next one would be analysis of cash flow. It's quite important for, for, for the lifeblood of any business. They say cash is king. So it's quite important as a business owner that you create a cash focus whereby there's, there's adequate uh, management of cash expectations and, and to see how, how, how is, your, is, your, is, is your relationship with money in, in, in the business and also how is, is cash actually flowing and how is actually cash being used optimally to support your business uh, transactions and needs and also for your business growth. So cash, is, cash flow analysis is quite important for any small business to grow. Next one would be financing in terms of how do you go about using debt or equity to finance your, your business in terms of uh, whether you go out there to, 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 to get a loan from bank or, or perhaps maybe uh, look at investors to assist you uh, in terms of growing your business. And then the next one would be performing a financial analysis. There, uh, it's quite important that you, you actually measure performance over time to see um, uh, how is your business actually performing, to see which products of my business are actually generating revenue? So which ones actually can I, can I uh, uh, pump up in terms of uh, marketing, et cetera, and which ones are the, are the slow performers? So it's quite important that you actually perform a, 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 an adequate financial analysis through ratios, et cetera, over time, which can actually help you to grow your business. And then tax, 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 tax. Many business, many business owners sometimes do not know how to how to uh, manage tax and how to actually pay their tax liabilities. So it's quite important that the business owners, um, you know, they, they comply with SARS because uh, when SARS actually comes knocking at your door, it's not going to be nice if you didn't do a file proper tax return. So it's quite important that you actually have qualified and competent people uh, to actually come in and assist you. And then lastly, it would be your financial reporting. Financial reporting is quite important uh, in terms of to SARS, to your investors, to your creditors. So if ever you, you, you need to get funding 
from a bank as well, etc. It's quite important that you've got proper financial reporting because they will always be asking for, for properly documented financial statements um, uh, for your business. So, 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 so in a nutshell, it's quite important that as a business owner, uh, as you would, if, if you're sick, you'd go to your doctor. So, so, so same with, 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 with your finances within the business. It's quite important that you actually employ a qualified and skilled accountant to actually help in, in terms of the health of your business to ensure that your business actually grows. Okay, so my concluding remark would be accountants are key to uh, are key business partners and history has proven that they directly have, have helped in terms of the accumulation of capital and the growth of business. You know, Queen Victoria back in the 1800s was not actually joking when he made when she made sure that you know what they were actually independent auditors because she understood that accountants are key uh, in terms of safeguarding her investments, which she had here in South Africa. Uh, hence, um, uh, various accounting bodies were actually set up back, back then. So, so my parting was to use make an accountant your friend uh, for financial peace of mind and in order for them to actually assist you uh, in the growth of your business. Thank you. Any questions or comments? Uh, thank you very much, uh, Prof. Cameroon. Yeah, it was really a journey, you know, when taking us all the way from the history up to the current uh, trends and the difficulties that obviously the profession has been faced with. So in terms of this of the questions, um, uh, I do see that there's actually been any questions that have been posted. So if uh, we are encouraging all our members, if you feel like you've got any question, please post any questions so that it can actually be addressed. So, but there's a question here. I don't know, uh, Mr. Likova, if maybe you can just go through some of the questions and read them for Prof to, to respond. So the first question that is posted here. So small businesses at times feel that accountant, as you indicated that uh, sometimes you you'll need an accountant to manage your uh, financials, that they're very mm. expensive. How can the small business leverage this? How can maybe they go around ensuring that at least they follow the accounting principles, but still get the benefit of it, even though maybe they are small business, they are small in the in terms of their size, then they can't afford to have a CA to assist them. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree that uh, in, in terms of uh, small businesses, accounting, accounting, accountants generally do not come cheap. Um, uh, simply because they, they go three years of training and 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 acquiring skills, so so it's quite important. It's quite a, it's quite expensive, perhaps to to hire an an in-house uh, accountant. So, but then other businesses, what they've done is uh, they've used um, um, they've used the the ex external service providers uh, in terms of perhaps uh, find other uh, small business owners. Um, uh, who, who, who do help in the preparation of, uh, of, of, of financial statements, et cetera. So, and also, uh, as I said to you, the number of accounting bodies in South Africa, which, which actually do offer the, the accounting services which you would need for businesses. So, so try and, and find them and see how they can actually help you in terms of the bookkeeping, the recording, the preparation of, and, and they actually do quite a, a good job. So it's a matter of just uh, trying to find those um, other small business owners who perhaps um, own um, small accounting firms, which you can actually use to assist you while you're still setting up and still trying to, to grow your business. Okay, thank you. So the second question is, what is the future of fintechs in accounting? Uh, I'm not sure if... I'm not sure if I understand the question in terms of what, um, maybe if you can try and expand on that in terms of uh, what does it mean by that, in terms of who is the, are they, are they, are they, is it worried that one have a future? You know, there's always a future. For example, for me, it's that the accounting profession is it's always it's evolving, it's growing. There's just so many things which, which are actually happening within the industry. And, and every year, it's almost like, 
there's new regulations, there's, there's new laws which are coming through. So, 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 so there's, there's definitely going to be an evolution, or in fact, the, the evolution is actually currently happening, um, and it's going to keep on happening for for years to come with more laws and regulations which are actually coming through from regulators, just simply based on the copper scandals which have been uh, which have been seen, uh, which have been ex experienced from from most big big corporates. So definitely, uh, I would say it's it's in the process of evolution. Okay. And the question, other question, it comes from Smangali Songwenya. It's what would you say are immediate? Immediate, immediate. Okay, what, what do you say are the immediate? <laughs> yeah, so his question, yeah, it's like that. So maybe I'm sure it's like immediate wins uh, regarding accounting. I think Just post this, what would you say are immediate? Um, so it's what would be the amount immediate accounting unless that, that you can use? To, to, to the current use of digital software banking, any tips, warnings, usage on digital platforms. Um, in terms of uh, the, the, the always be the fraud which is actually happening and, and people trying to scheme you of your money. I think um, as, a, as, a, as a person, um, especially living in the digital space, it starts to always need to be aware, need to be wary, especially uh, from uh, for, from emails and etc. You know, especially your, your banking details. Just don't click on any on 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 any link or platform whereby it's suspicious and, and you're not sure where it's actually coming from. And uh, and 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 it's quite important that uh, we become educated and and actually tech savvy around what is actually um, happening uh, in the in, in in this world because you know what, all these schemers and people want also wanna your money as such so, so yeah so we always need to be to be careful and just be wary of these new and creative ways of people trying to steal your money either from um social media on your on your phone or on on emails etc on email phishing etc uh, any other question michano hi question is can account tent do a forensic auditing other than accepting what is produced by the client as evidence? Um, no, um, when, when you actually perform a, a forensic um, audit, it, it, it's, it's more about you actually investigating and, and, and sort of like try, try maybe performing a, a, prep, a paper trail and, 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 and just looking beyond the surface. It's more when you perform a forensic audit or forensic accounting, it's, it's always looking beyond just what the client gives you and perhaps looking at, at other trends, talking to other people, talking to third parties, uh, phoning tech managers, phoning other clients, um, phoning um, creditors and stakeholders, et cetera. So, so looking at what's happening in the media, et cetera. So, 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 so um, being a forensic auditor, it's actually quite, quite a, 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 a rare and scarce skill whereby you need to be quite creative in your thinking and almost like, uh, uh, I remember, when I was back at school, my professor used to say to me that you must think like a like a criminal in a way, in order for you to be able to catch criminal, especially if you, if if you venture into the 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 field of 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 forensic auditing and accounting. Thanks. Okay, thanks. So there's a question also from um, uh, Leo Hang Likova, uh, BMF uh, Soweto uh, Secretary. He's asking why does industry put more emphasis on CAs or shadow accountants being appointed as CAE or chief internal auditors, fraud managers, and even tax practitioners when we have specialized bodies that train internal auditors like your IA, uh, fraud, IA fraud managers, which is your SCFE, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. I always get this um, typical question. I think it's because industry, perhaps, um, especially when, when when recruiters are just looking, they just look look for a CA, and they think a CA can actually do all these things um, without without necessarily looking. Even also from a from an HR point of view, when they actually draft that job advert, they they always say say those things, and and maybe it's because of lack of knowledge, maybe, and 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 
And I always say that, you know, one thing which Saka has done in this country is that they've, they've actually marketed, marketed themselves extremely well. Um, they're currently rated as the number one accounting profession in the world or uh, accounting professional body in South Africa, simply because of the, of the fact that I think they, they've done a good job uh, in terms of marketing their designation because uh, all these uh, accounting bodies, they're always competing on the uh, designations because all, all, all these accounting bodies, they've got different designations, but in, it's simply about how do we actually market to do a designation uh, in in the market, um, and also how does industry actually receive that? So there's almost a, a superiority complex um, which is there with with chartered accountants, and and then I look at it, um, maybe you know, in, in terms of how um, one would get to uh, get an entrance exam, and those board exams being difficult, but similarly with with other uh, professional bodies, they also do have. Uh, uh, difficult exams which you need to pass. So for me, it's simply about how they've actually marketed themselves um, the, to industry. Yeah, maybe, uh, prof, maybe perhaps you must look at writing an, a journal or an article on that. Very interesting. <laughs> yes. Okay. Faith, uh, as what is the future of accountants or book bookkeepers considering that most of the processes are being automated i would say um accountants and audit i mean they would have to upskill themselves and uh, i agree with you but it's quite important that um they actually upskill themselves and uh, because um the way we, we learned accounting back at school i remember it was it was more of a paper driven it was not not, not as, as automated as it is today because when you get into the the audit world today or in the business world we're given an, an, an ERP system they say you must, must audit a, a uh, an accounting system such as sage or whatever it is um and then how, how can you audit that if you're not if you don't if you don't have those IT skills so it's quite important that uh, even though one is is, is, is qualified as a CA whatever it is, it's quite important that you always upskill yourselves um, uh, in terms of what's actually happening out there because um, uh, now we're actually auditing through the computer, through, through, through the use of, of computers. And it's quite important for you, for accountants and also for auditors to understand how um, IT systems and, 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 and how these financial accounting systems actually work in order, in order for them to remain uh, relevant. Okay, thank you. There is also a question also from Smangali Sangwenya. Uh, his question is, what will you say are the immediate accounting alerts you can give to the current use of digital platforms like your cell phone, banking, internet banking on a personal level? Any tips, warnings for personal budgeting or usage of digital platforms? Uh, I think I've already addressed that one um, about uh, Mavango. Okay. Stima Katson Lovu says, Prof, what are your views regarding the future of demand of IT auditors as we face fourth industrial revolution? Are we expecting more demands for IT auditors? Definitely. I think we, we would, be, especially. Um, with with the demand for um for foyer you know I've, I've seen some way paper whereby now they're looking for for four hour auditors meaning you'd have to know how to um audit through um uh, uh, artificial intelligence robotics etc so definitely uh, for it auditors there would be an, a need uh and a demand for that in the future so it will be quite important that again people have upskilled themselves and prepare themselves for the future challenges as the world which we're actually living in has, has, has actually changed. Even with the emergence of, of, COVID, of COVID, I think it, it, it has somehow fast tracked the process of technology, um, I think by five years, in terms of uh, so many things that have actually happened in the past uh, two years, simply because of COVID around working from home, um, how companies had to adapt to making their systems actually work and doing away with with paper driven um 
process within the companies. So definitely there'll be a need for four hour auditors and it's quite important for people to, to get themselves up for that. Okay, thanks. Uh, Michan Kai um, also asked again, how can these corporate scandals be avoided? The one that you just mentioned as the big five ones, if the auditors and accountants are involved, if there's a collusion, <laughs> who audit the auditors? <laughs> um, auditors, um, they actually found by, um, for example, uh, Urba, um, it, it does have some, some, some form of inspectors, which they do have in-house. And they're also bound by the codes and standards which they actually have within 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 that uh, uh, jurisdiction. And also for for example, for for for, for internal auditors, um, uh, auditors um, their work would have to be reviewed. I think every five years. So 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 it, it does happen whereby auditors their work does get checked to make sure that they're still following the proper protocols and they're doing the work in line with the with the auditing standards. So. So, so yeah, even that, so it's quite important that, you know, I think from, from, from my personal point of view, I think it's quite important that this sort of work is done much more rigorously and just to evaluate and also to check on whether are, are, this, are these auditors who have qualified even, even, even 20 years ago, are they still, are they still relevant? Are they actually go, going through continuing, continuous professional development, et cetera? Okay. Thanks. The next question is from Macom. Uh, it says, in terms of transformation, I recall we still have a le far less black student graduating as CAs. Is there any initiatives being uh, auctioned to fix this? Maybe just to add to this question, also including the, the professional bodies in terms of the representative of black professional in those, um, in those bodies that you listed. Yeah, um, it's it's there. I'm, I'm, I must say, I won't lie to you. In terms of, uh, it's better than it was perhaps 10, 20 years ago. In terms of the representation of black uh, professionals in the accounting and auditing space, but more can actually be done. What I can tell you is that um, the good thing is that um, the number of, of institutions um, um, were, whereby they're actually producing your, your black CAs, your institutions such as um, um, uh, UJ, for example, UNISA, we've got the biggest number of CTA students in the whole country, um, whereby we will, we will work uh, very hard in terms of producing uh, black chartered accountants in this country. So, 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 so there are some initiatives, and I know that even SciKai as well, they do have some programs in place, whereby they do have some bursaries to give to, to young black uh, students who are actually doing well we go do in metric around maths and accounting in high school. So, so definitely it's it's happening, even though it's slow. But at least there are some moves in the in 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 in, in a positive direction. Okay, thanks. The other question comes from Neil Roy. He says, Prof, one of the pillars of BMF is socio-economic transformation. However, if one looks at the socio-economic development spending. Uh, through CSR slash things I, it becomes difficult to financial account for 1% of NP, NP, PAT that needs to, to be spent on social uh, interventions. How could accountants assist social economic transformation academy work together in order to resolve this complex challenge? Sure, yeah, that's actually a tough one. Um, the issue of so social economic transformation, it's a big one uh, in terms of, uh, um, for example, there are some corporate who are actually trying to invest in, in, in terms of their, their social corporate investments, uh, social corporate re responsibility in, in various entities by, by again, in terms of perhaps uh, giving bursaries, you know, go, going back to communities just to give to them some Sometimes they do help uh, small business owners in terms of uh, how they they would help them um, how, how they grow their businesses. So so there is some work which is actually been done by some companies. Um, um, and but to me honestly, my view is that some of these entities are, are normally doing it as a tick box approach, and it's not actually coming 
coming from the heart, but obviously there are those which are actually doing it from the heart, which actually care about uh, black communities and also the, the transformation of the of the of the of the accounting profession. In terms of uh, academics and 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 how accountants can work to, to, together, for example, um, at Tunisia we do have programs in place whereby we do um, go to to for example we, we do tutoring at schools at no fee whereby we tutor accounting uh, to you know as part of our community engagements etc. So we do do some work around around that space. And, and 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 it's always difficult, but but I think it's, it's it, it it needs to come from from the heart, and also it needs to come from 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 us society wanting to see change, um, especially from those who who are previously disadvantaged. Thanks, Prof. As Mangalisa asked, do you think the presence of fiscal accountants is at risk, provided the continuous evolution of digital technology, what if you foresee as the responsibility or function of an accountant being in the next 10 years, will it remain the same? No, definitely um, the, 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 the accountant is, is changing. Um, it's changing, of, for example, even, even right now, Saika is in the process of transforming their curriculum. As I've got your, your CA25 program. <clears throat> and, and what's interesting is that They've actually included uh, some some IT components or some IT skills, uh, which um, auditors and accountants need to have. So there's continuous e evolution around the the accounting profession, and and it's mainly driven by by IT and OIR, et etc. And, and 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 as I said to you before, that is quite important that uh, we need to gear ourselves up for the for the for the transformation, uh, which is actually happening. In the digital space, and we need to be ready um, um, for for what is to come. Because if if you don't upskill ourselves, we are gonna remain left behind uh, in terms of the world that we're living in. It is constantly changing. It is constantly evolving, and 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 it's it's quite important that we we, we read, we attend seminars like this, uh, we learn from from other people in terms of what's actually happening out there in 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 the market to actually remain relevant. Okay, thanks. Uh, Maluse Ramela asks, Prof, in terms of the demand and supply of auditors, will you say there's over or under supply of skilled professionals? <laughs> oh, okay. No, I, I don't think that, that, there's, that, that there's actually an over and under supply, simply because if you look at the, at the market right now, um, the, at the job market, you see that there will always be a need for for your skilled auditors, people, and and and, and you know what I'm picking up lately <clears throat> is that companies actually looking for for people with with, with almost like a, a a mixture of of qualifications, meaning, for example, someone who would typically be a CA, and then also would have that IT background and skills and skills. So, so 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 the market out there is is also. Um, Demanding more from 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 professionals in terms of them actually having a variety of skills. In fact, um, uh, in, in 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 the next two weeks, I'm actually having a meeting. Um, I've been invited for a breakfast with with PwC in terms of uh, graduate recruitment. So there's always a need uh, around 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 auditors and accountants, and and and, and it's, it's it's interesting to see that you know the big four firms. They still see the need um, to to go back to the grassroots and actually um, recruiting from universities and actually talking to the to the people which actually train these these accountants and auditors which will ultimately come and, and actually uh, work for them. So so yeah, definitely. I don't think currently um, there will. I don't think there's an oversupply, but but market is currently indicating that there's still a need and uh, it's just a matter of, of making sure that you've got the right skills in order for you um, uh, uh, to remain relevant and for you to be employed and not be redundant in this type okay. of economy. Yeah, it is. Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Maybe just an additional question. Um, as you know, 
you have seen that there's been so many commissions that have been actions in South Africa, where most of the time the recommendations are, are stated clearly that this should be followed, but you find that uh, nothing's actually done there. So uh, I just wanted to make an example, like maybe let's say an individual go and commit, um, uh, let's say like go and made an organization and perform his duties, not in a way that's ethically and also uh, integrity mm -hmm. to uh, to that organization. But it looks like there's no accountability. Does it mean that uh, maybe your institute, like your psych, only mm -hmm. punish those that commit uh, wrongdoings within psych? If maybe you do it as a, at SAA or you do it at any companies, you are you you're not uh, you, you, there is no chance for you to be to be punished or to face any consequences. No, um, I, I, I'm, I'm not sure if, if, if you read the, the recommendations from, from from the Zonda report, but there was one recommendation whereby it was said that, uh, for example, Saika needs to take certain steps against uh, uh, Yaki Kunana, which is a, a qualified chartered accountant, but then chartered accountant, which which was in, involved in uh, in shady activities um, at uh, at SA, SA Express. Or as a technical as a board member, so so the the, the, the and, uh, and and I, I do believe that Saika has actually um, made a, a, a public declaration that they're gonna be um, disciplining her or something like that. So so in terms of the, they're merely protecting the integrity of their own um, qualifications um, um, or, the, or designation. So definitely. Um, professional bodies out there, they are trying to to clamp down on those who are who are doing wrong things. But obviously, it's not enough. But I think it's a start. Um, it's a process. Um, and ethics, I think it, it has come. It has become a big issue as well uh, in in the accounting and, and auditing space. And and also, there's a need for ethical accountants and auditors, um, uh, which I've seen out there in the market as well. And I do believe that even even Saika as well. They do have have, have included uh, something that goes along ethics um, within their core modules around uh, the CA25 program. So I think it's good to developments. You know, all these things which are actually happening are leading us to the right direction in terms of ha having ethical and skilled professionals which you can actually re rely upon. Thanks. Okay. Thank you very much. Um... There is no any additional questions here from the chat. Uh, we still have time. Maybe perhaps out of curiosity, if there's going to be any question, just as if maybe Prof Cameroon belongs to any DMF branch, or is it something that maybe in future <laughs> it's looking into? Um, you're putting me in a corner now. Of course, <laughs> we'll, we'll look into that. <laughs> Definitely, okay. we'll make it happen. Okay. <laughs> right, okay. No, okay. thanks, thanks. Um, I can see that there's no additional questions, but uh, maybe just on that, I don't know if maybe your slides, uh, as for your contacts, if in case, if they need to ask any further questions, because I see right now we don't have any additional questions. If maybe they can contact my you. My contacts. I think I did put in my contacts. Okay. Uh, at the, I think the first slide. Yeah. All right. Okay. Cool. So we'll we'll we'll, we'll actually share them to 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 to, to every attendees here today. Um, I think without any delay, because there's no questions here, I'll just hand sure. over to Kutaso to give us the word of thanks and any announcements. All right. Thank you, sir. Um, ladies and gentlemen, a very good evening to all. It gives me immense pleasure to deliver the vote of thanks for this webinar. I am Khotato Dipoko, the Deputy Secretary of the Black Management Forum Soweto Branch. Um, I would like to thank our guest speaker, Professor Mudisani, for honoring this webinar with his presence and sharing his knowledge in accounting with us. It was an, an informative revelation to most of us. I hope business owners have had a broader understanding of financial 
analysis, taxation, and financial reporting, and see it as a financial peace of mind to make an accountant your friend. Once again, I thank everyone present uh, in this webinar. Our um, Soweto Black Management Forum uh, members, uh, you, Mr. Chair, and everyone who managed to join this webinar. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. So maybe can you also go for the further and give us announcement? Okay. Please hold on for me. Ooh. Okay. Hey, this is taking forever now. All right, okay, we, uh, our announcements are as follows. Uh, first announcement is that our next BMF branch meeting is on the 19th of February, uh, 2022. And then secondly, township economy workshop date to be confirmed. Diaries for members, that's point number three, diaries for members to be handed out in the next branch meeting. And lastly, the membership new and renewal drive is extended to the 31st of March this year. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you everyone, colleagues for attending. I believe it was a very fruitful, uh, engaging uh, evening. I do believe that everyone really enjoyed So uh, it was a very successful one. So to Prof Cameroon, I know you've been, we have actually thank you for I gracing us today, but we're still saying thank you very much for actually attending and also providing workshop to our members. And really, I believe that it's going to help us grow as people. And we're still looking forward to engage further in future. But to everyone, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your evening until we meet again next time.